Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. My name is Jeff Larson, and this episode starts a an entirely new series of the program. We have formed a critique group of photographers, all of whom I greatly admire. So for the next six weeks on The Crit House, we will discuss each other's work, our projects, and you get to come along for the ride. And our photographers here with us today are Nina Welch-Kling, Nina Welch-Kling is a New York-based, German-born photographer who combines a background in architecture and design with her love for ro roaming the city streets that inform her often mysterious photographic depictions of everyday life. Her work has been included in multiple international photography exhibitions and publications, and she has been honored as a Hasselblad heroine. In 2020, she received the Lens Culture Critics Choice Award and was a finalist in the Lens Culture Street Photography Awards. In April of 2023, when we're recording this, her first book, Duologues, was published by Carer Verlag. So congratulations, Nina, on the publication of your book. Nick Gervin is with us as well. He has uh, worked, uh, he has had his work published in many local and international magazines and several photo books, including his latest monograph entitled Portlanders, published by Photo Editions in 2022. As of March of this year, when recording this, Nick has, was, has been elected as the president of the uh, board of directors uh, at the Baker Photographic Collective, a nonprofit photo community of uh, photo, photo education and finishing center in Portland, Maine. Nick, it's great to have you with us. Janae Lien is with us. He is a Los Angeles-based photographer who co-founded These Streets magazine and One Stop Film Lab. Her passions include street photography, creating unique shoots with friends and capturing her two-year-old son, Mika. Granville Carroll, is a visual artist and Afrofuturist who teaches at Arizona State University. He has a BFA and an MFA in photography related studies. And uh, he has been awarded a top 50 in critical mass and received a fellowship in photography from the New York Foundation for the Arts. His first book, Dark Matter, was published in 2022. And friend of the show, Ellen Friedlander is back with us again. She is a Los Angeles-based artist who uses various in-camera and post-processing techniques to reveal the human condition's unpredictable, idiosyncratic, and inscrutable nature. Friedlander is a Kai Pai Pai Fellow, and I, I think I might have pronounced that wrong again, uh, and a co-director of the Pasadena Photography Arts, which promotes diverse photography projects by establishing by and uh, uh, by established and emerging photographers worldwide. And I am Jeff Larson, the host of The Crit House. I'm a lifelong learner, street photographer, and I have recently shifted my photography focus to landscape and this little project that we will be discussing today. My book is called Sonder. My project that I have, that has been shown here on the program once before with a uh, a uh, couple of other reviewers, and I got some good input, but I'm now looking for this project to be um, put in for critical mass, um, which I've never done before. I've never gone through the process, and I know that some people here have either thought about it. Granville, you have um, moved very long in that process before. So I wrote um, this um, uh, artist statement, which... I guess I'll read if it's okay, just so you kind of get a sense of it. My photographic life has been spent wandering the city, and people were at the center of my work. I was moved by the knowledge that all people I passed, all the people I saw, had stories and lives as profoundly felt as my own. That was my photography until suddenly everyone disappeared. In that sad time, walking alone on the quiet streets with people locked in their houses away from my, the sight of my camera, I looked around and found beauty in the stories in the empty storefronts, the locked garages, and the closed schools. I realized there was history, life, love, death, and memory in spaces left shuttered and abandoned. People dined, laughed, and cried in this old restaurant, and over there a man sewed clothes in a darkened tailor shop. Whether we think about it or not, we, have all, we all have memories born within walls like these. We all remember the old places, what they looked like, and what happened there. Records, stores become coffee shops, and schools become condos. 
In these new places, new memories will be made and eventually fade. These images show the elegance of those overlooked transitional places. This is uh, this is the project. So with with critical mass, um, you have to get it down to ten images. I have twenty five images here, so you can see them all there. But I'll go through them briefly, and I think you've all at least had access to the to uh, to see them previously um, when I sent them before. So if I can call out someone to talk, and I th I think Granville. Uh, I'm going to start with you if I can, just because you have you have uh, experience with critical mass, and mm -hmm. you are also an educator who does a lot of photo critiques with your students as well. So, what are what are your like initial thoughts? And we'll pass it around the room. Yeah. So yeah, I did critical mass twice. First time I got top 200. Second time I went all the way through top 50. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say exactly. I think really what they look for is um, things that are different, new, refreshing, right? Um, and the concept, the writing is really what's important. Um, so like looking at your work and, you know, pondering your, your statement and everything, uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me is sort of this personification of this location. Um, you know, especially as you talk about how initially, you know, when you got into photography, you're photographing people. Um, and I'm assuming you're sort of referencing COVID and quarantine um, and not having that ability anymore. So then what do you do with that? Uh, or what do you do with your practice when you don't have access to the subject matter? Um, so this, I feel like, is almost like a, a stand in for the person, right? For the people that would occupy the space. Um, so, yeah, so it feels like a person personification of this, the place and the architecture, these buildings. Um, it has this sort of weird in-betweenness, but weird in a really good way, <laughs> um, <laughs> where I sort of imagine myself existing within like a different dimension, if you will. Like I almost want to say purgatory, but that has such a negative connotation and I don't think that's what this actually expresses. Um, but there's just like this real quietness to it where you're sort of searching yeah. and looking and finding. Um, but there's really nothing that grounds you. Um, and you're sort of being pushed and pulled between these different realms. It's almost like the veil of two worlds are starting to merge together. Um, so, I mean, I think it's really strong work I mean, and just beautiful to look at and, and um, visually complex in a way that you have to sort of sit with the work and sort of wade through the different tonalities and the textures and the forms, um, which I find to be quite pleasing. All right, rest of you are thinking. Who has something to say? Okay, I'll I'll jump in. Please do. Um, so what I noticed because you're trying to get it down to ten photos. Yes. There is the repetition of this long row of windows in mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the images. So because you only have 10 of them, I feel like you can eliminate one or two of them just kind of right off the, the back because I think you don't want to be repetitive. Um, so, for example, like number 15 has a similar feel as um, number 21. Yes. I see that. So... Um, because it kind of has the same uh, rhythm to the photo. You also, because you have vertical and horizontal, you kind of want to, I think, balance it. And then do you want to go like three, one? So it's random enough, but there is a system to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm very big on kind of sequencing. If you have vertical and horizontals to how do you want to make it look either? I mean, how do you want to make it look purposeful? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good thoughts. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, you can pull them up if you want. So maybe we even want to look, can look at them and as a group kind of say, you know what, I feel like this is a stronger image. Um, keep one of them or I don't know um, if you want to go into that specifics. Well, so this, that was one of them. Right, which I feel like is a little different than, yeah, like this one. And... This one, yeah. 
let's see, there was, and all of these sort of have longer series of windows that stretch from side to side. Mm -hmm. I love this one. I would say this one stays. Well, that's good to know. Is this that this a, is number three? This is the first one. This is right? number three, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. this, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I agree because it's also not going consistently all the way through the image. Yeah, it's 18 and 21, I think, or is it 15 and 21 or something that are very, very similar? Yeah. 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 These three. Right. Do you want to like build a narrative or any sort of like storyline or are you mainly thinking about sequencing in terms of like form and things of that nature. You know, I, I think that I think that it's probably something where I want to have, and this follows up on what Nina was saying, have enough variation in the um the types of images that, that you have there. So to like sort of play around. Mm -hmm. So this 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 one number is one of my favorites. I just I love it. Um I think this this one is up here. I'll and I'll pull these up larger uh screen. So I'm gonna put sort of ones that I think are the top 10 and in my particular mind, um, that may not be the case for for everyone here. So I'm just gonna oops, didn't didn't go through. Um, and I think sometimes the easiest easy there is no easy way to to sequence. But <laughs> like, what is the the image that you feel is the first image that when they're looking at the series kind of really tells the story, mm -hmm. you know, in in the strongest way and keeps their interest and not like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't even want to go to the next 10 images. Well, that's, because that's a good question. Through so many, they're looking through so many submissions that yes. unless that, you know, you catch their attention, it's really hard to, to kind of catch up. Um, I, I get that. I, right. I, I think that's absolutely right. So I think I, I, I like, I think this image for me is strong. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, this is probably a closer for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just, these are these are images that I feel are um, amongst the strongest of them. I love this one. This I one here. The house. This one. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is love, really love, strong. I agree. Love, you know, like starting or having this in the beginning would be really advantageous because it's just so you're you're, especially with your title the complex life, how, how everything was quiet and you know that every, everything does have life and has memory and such. And here it's very ambiguous and you have the house kind of elusive in the background and the darkness and the light. It's just sets the tone. I don't know what every, mm -hmm. everybody else thinks, but it's definitely yeah. mysterious. I, I agree. I think that this should, should probably be the opener or at the, or the closer one of the two, but I I'm leaning towards opener for sure. It's a unique composition. Yeah. Like it's something that is eye-catching and um, seems very fine art to me in, in how it plays with that imbalance and balance right there. I think it's, it, so it's, it's everything the series is about without giving it away. It, it creates mystery. And so, but it yet it, it holds all the form of what the series is about, light, shadow, reflection, depth. And and it's got the house, which says a lot, and and it almost looks like a commercial space as well, which also says a lot to the pandemic. And um, that was an old know. real estate office. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. so actually, I, I I really it's interesting that you choose, you you say that because one of my concerns about this particular image, and that's our twelve minutes, but let's keep talking for a couple more. <laughs> um, one of my uh, interesting is is I was concerned that this isn't representative of the rest of the body of work because you have more that are sort of they're straighter. They're I mean they're um, they're not as confusing um, and not sort of fine too. arty as some yeah, of the this, other ones. This would be my I second. Love, I love yeah, me too. I love this. Love this. But but when you're putting photographs together, you don't want them all to kind of be the same just like nina was talking mm -hmm. about you want them to have the overall feeling but they should not all be the same so it's okay yeah. that they have a little um that they they're not quite all following the same formal elements and this structure. one's really strong yeah, i would lovely. this is a second image in my my opinion but laser tag in denver colorado yeah. I agree, though. I think that the idea of visual variety, which is something I 
tell my students about all the time is like, you know, follow the visual strategy that you have. Mm -hmm. But these slight deviations is what's going to create something that feels more dynamic and just more visually engaging. Uh, so that first picture, I think, is different in some ways, but it sort of sets the stage in a really, in a nice tone so that when they get into the next uh, couple images down the line, uh, it's almost like surprise after surprise, right? So like you're constantly keeping them engaged with what's coming next. Um, so that one is a lot more simple and minimal in its visual strategy, but I think as you allow the project to unfold within the, the 10 image sequence, um, just thinking about that in the back of your mind about how can you make them stay engaged? Because, um, you know, yeah, that's the point, yeah. right? Okay. And I think they're also consistent in terms of their tonal values. So even so, they might not tell, you know, they might not be all as conceptual as the one we all, um, the, with the building uh, that we thought would be a great starter. Your your the, the the darks and the lights are very similar throughout the series, so I think that really helps you to carry the series through. Okay. So I don't think it really matters that you know one is a little bit more conceptual or a little more um, literal, literal than the other. I okay. mean, they don't all have to be kind of open ended. I mean, they're all open ended. Just right. some are less open ended, if there's even such a thing. So I, I, I've, I've gone past my time, but let me just show wait, and moving things around. What? Yeah, no, you have you have to stay on on because I think the closed you have. I think it was number six originally, but the one that you can actually see closed. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. this would be kind of interesting. It'd be interesting what anybody else thinks to end with this. True. Yep. Or um, open with it because of the pandemic. <laughs> I know I thought about That's that, true. but I really, right. I really like though where everybody's going with that very mysterious image to start with, because yeah. as a viewer and as somebody looking at photographs, that's going to be like I'm curious, so curious, yeah. what's coming next. So yeah. I've gone back and forth about including this, um, you know, because I it's I don't know that it's the strongest of the images there. It's got the closed sign. It's and but and I wonder if it's a little too like on point. Oh my God. Uh, I I feel like it, I really like the image, but I do feel like it's a little bit too on the nose. Um, yeah, for me, you know, I look at it, I'm like, okay, that's a really beautiful image, but then I see clothes. So it sort of tells me what I need to think. And then I want to quickly move on. Um, that's well, so, that's just me. I'm yeah, having no, such no. a hard time, Granville. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> because this photograph has like all these lo lovely lines and lovely shapes and love and the uh, you know the the sign for the um um the wheelchair sign um there it, it's it's a, it tells me that a person's missing and and then the reoccurrence of the shapes of the light poles. I mean, it's just classic as far as structural elements go. And then it's kind of that closed over top. It's like, uh, you know? And the light switches, like those are even like turned off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they are. <laughs> I never I, noticed but, that. <laughs> but then the minute say... you introduce, sorry, the minute you introduce a word in a photograph, you know, you kind of, I don't know if you pick 10 photos where there is, you know, there, there there are words introduced in a bunch of them or in a couple of them, I think, yes. But if it's the only one, then I, I think it becomes too, um, literal, you know, too, too, what's the word, literate? Literal. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah it, literal, thank yes. you. Sorry. Sorry. Takes up so much space. So I think in like the entire sequence that you have here for the project, it does work. Um, and all the things that people are mentioning, like the the light switches, the uh, wheelchair sign, like those are really important elements. <clears throat> but I think for the ten for critical mass, you really just want to give them the best of the best. Um, so if you were to include this in the ten sequence, I would recommend not to have it at the beginning nor the end, but have mm -hmm. it somewhere in the middle. Okay. So that okay. way, there's still more for them to sort of gather. But if you have it at the end, it's kind of like all right, you know, it, I don't know, it falls a little bit flat in that sense. So I think yeah. thinking about just the se the sequence, the rhythm and then the flow and how, because yeah, Nina's right. When you have that word, it's just, it, it carries so much um, weight with it. So you just, well, you make a, make a zine. It could be a good cover. 
Well, that's that is yeah, true, and I, I I have thought about doing a zine with this. Perhaps perhaps after I get dumped out of critical mass and, and abused by. It. <laughs> <clears throat> Although, if if at critical mass judges are viewing this, I would love you a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for thank you for your input. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, ho hopefully, our viewers will enjoy this process of our talking about a body of work, and I will probably at some point. Um, once the critical mass thing is done, come back and sort of say what what happened with it on the program. So thank you all for uh, helping with my review and thank you all for watching The Crit House.